Hi everybody, it's Chris from Octopot, along with my team behind the camera, Kayla, my lovely and talented daughter. We're here at the end of week two on our Friday night video to do a quick review and then we're going to talk about pH. We get several calls a week about pH and we're going to address it tonight. So uh, first we're going to insert picture here. Do you see uh, the, the plant on the right is the cocoa and peat mix plant. It's doing really well. It's uh, 21 inches tall, 16 inches wide. It's got leaves as big as my hand. Um, the other one in the living soil is not doing as well. And I've realized that I've messed this up now too. We heard from our buddy Kim about uh, the living soil. Um, his feedback was that it wasn't really living when we put that all in there. It's kind of like baking a cake. You know, you get all the ingredients, you throw them in a bowl and you know, bring on the ice cream. No, no, you've got to bake it first. And we didn't bake our living soil. We didn't get it to the living stage. It's just inert ingredients that are now starting to come alive because we've got a plant in there. We should have grown something in there first, a cover crop, and then proceeded along. Uh, since we didn't do that, we'll do it next time. And we're gonna continue on to see how this does. Uh, considering everything, it still looks pretty good. Hi, I'm back. So we're going to talk about pH, and pH is a measure of the acid or base of a water, of acid or alkaline. It, it's a measure that goes from zero to 14 with seven being neutral or medium. Uh, that's basically rainwater on a 77 degree day, pure rainwater. Um, we want to control our pH because pH de determines the solubility, availability, and uptake of nutrients in the solution to the plant. So basically, the, uh, the laws, the electrons, everything that happens scientifically in the soil happens at a certain range. So the breakup of nutrients, the turning into forms that the plants can take, and then the actual movement into the plant is controlled or influenced highly by pH. Uh, your optimum pH is in the 5-5 to 6-5 to range, with 6-2 being a, the sweet spot where most of the nutrients are available. Different nutrients are available at different pHs. There's just a range where this one may get more, and this one may get less, and this one may get le more and then less. It's, it's a balance. So it's okay to have a pH shift. It just should be within a certain range. Now, the uh, pH for hydroponics is generally low on the range, 5.5 five to 5.9, maybe 6.0. With the octopods, we're above that range. We are, remember, a, uh, a hybrid system. We have a hydroponic and a soil system, and they work in conjunction with each other. So we have found that the best pH is around the 6.2, 6.3 area. That works for the, the environment in the hydroponic and the soil. Now, what we want to do by adjusting our pH is avoiding nutrient lockout. The nutrients, as we know, are only available in a certain range. Above that range or below the range, it's like overdosing or underdosing for the plant. It can't work right. And so what happens is the plant starts to show symptoms or characteristics of, 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 of the decline, which would be um, yellowing, intervenal yellowing, that's like between the veins of the leaves, it starts turning yellow or light green. Um, it it kind of looks like a nutrient deficiency, so generally people add more fertilizer to their plant and it just makes it all worse. It spikes up the pH, uh, or, or shoots down the pH, I should say, shoots down the pH and everything becomes even more unavailable and they just starve to death, even though there's food all around them. Uh, it can go the other way too with alkaline um, unavailability, where you get tip burn, leaf cutting, uh, cupping, the leaves, not only do the tips start to turn brown, but they curl. And that's basically because iron and calcium aren't available to the plant, and those are the symptoms. Um, like I said, we get several calls uh, about pH shift in the octopot reservoir itself. And in general, it's, it's, it's normal. You know, different things are taken out, it changes the uh, solution, um, electricity traveling through everything, which 
uh, affects the pH. And um, what we normally say is that the water is in the right range going in to the octopot, either from your hydro reservoir or just your bucket or your tap, you should be in, in fine shape. Um, what can happen is you could put too much fertilizer like we just talked about, that can cause a high spike. The other thing that I've seen is oversaturation of the, the growing media. So if you've got a soil that has uh, considerably less than 30 or 40 percent perlite, the soil becomes waterlogged and the oxygen becomes deprived and uh, depraved oxygen. There's not enough oxygen and the soil charge pulls from the water and all again that scientific stuff and you see a, a giant spike in your pH. So there's a, a solution to that. First, use the right soil, and if it's too late for that, lower your water level. That'll allow more of the oxygen transfer and keep your water at a, a more buffered level. Um, water typically is alkaline when it comes out, so we use acid to change it. At least that's what we do here. And I've got a phosphoric acid that I use. It's from my greenhouse days. I, 20, 20 gallon drum and it's lasted me over 30 years. You just use a little bit. If I were professional about this, this would be graduated. I would have measurements taken of my pre-amended uh, water and my post-amended water, what it took to get there. I could just follow my little chart and I would suggest that if you're serious, that's what you should do. One day I'll get there too, but it's not today. And so um, I'm just kind of used to squirting for a couple of seconds, pulling it off and then testing it. This is a pH tester. This is a blue lab. It works really well. Um, you just poke it in there, turn it on, and then start reading after you've stirred the water until you get it to the right amount. So I'll be using it first in my plain water for the living soil, and then I will add my nutrients to the water for the cocoa peat blend. And then after I get my nutrients to the right level, I'll pH it. I don't want to pH it first, because the nutrients will affect all of that. So uh, that's a quick course on pH. I hope it's helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. You watch us next time. Grow in peace.